Hi students, so let me show you a quick little trick that we have for simplifying a circuit that has more than one voltage source. So if we have um, multiple voltage sources in a series circuit like this, um, let's suppose this is 10 volts, we'll call this R1, R2, R3, we can let this be say 34 volts. Um, we know as a consequence of KVL that if we add up all the voltage drops around a loop, we should get zero. So if I do that, I'll say by KVL, we have that following the passive sign convention, if I start here and go around the loop this way, I would enter this voltage source um, through the negative terminal, so this would be a negative 10 volts, plus my voltage drop across R1, so VR1, plus 34 volts, because I'm entering this um, through the positive terminal, plus the voltage drop across R2, plus the voltage drop across R3, and that's going to be equal to zero. So um, I have these constant values in my KVL equation due to these voltage sources. And um, it turns out that these are just going to combine to give us um, 24 plus VR1 plus VR2 plus VR3 right? So even though they're not directly next to each other, they're separated by this resistor here, we can actually just add up these sources and they behave like a single 24 volt source. So it turns out that um, I can call this V source total is equal to V source 1 plus V source 2 plus V source 3 and so on as long as um, the voltage sources are in parallel. Okay, so this is not true for current sources, this is only true for voltage sources and this is a consequence of KVL. So I can actually rewrite this circuit as um, containing one voltage source with a value 24 volts and then I don't have to write this voltage source here, I would just have R1 R2 and R3. So this circuit can actually simplify to this circuit here as long as the voltage sources are in series like this. And by KVL we just add them together and these two are just going to combine into one 24 volt source. Um, so that's how we would combine, combine voltage sources if they're in series. Um, it doesn't actually make sense to combine voltage sources in parallel, so you're not going to see that. Um, I'll say combining voltage sources in parallel, we don't want to do that. The reason why is it, it can actually be dangerous. So suppose we have two voltage sources combined in parallel and we hook this up to some kind of a, a parallel circuit like this. So since these are connected in parallel, this top node is going to have the same potential as um, here as it is here, right? Because these are just connected by a wire. So it doesn't make sense for, say, this to be like a 10 volt source and for this to be a 5 volt source because the value here should be the same voltage. And same story here um, at down here at ground we should expect the voltage here to be the same as the voltage here. Okay, so um, putting different voltage sources together like this in parallel um, is actually going to violate our laws for circuit analysis. The other problem is, um, uh, from a practical standpoint, if you do end up doing something like this, whichever is the more powerful voltage source is going to see the other voltage source as like another resistor in the circuit. So it's going to see this as like um, a load to which this source is going to want to deliver um, current to. So if you deliver current to say um, a battery or some kind of voltage source like this, um, this could be problematic, damaging to the component and possibly dangerous. So that's why we don't combine voltage sources in parallel, but it's totally fine to combine them in series like this. In the next video I'll show you how we combine current sources.